This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 583 of the Dressage Radio Show, official podcast of the United States Dressage Federation on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by ProStride. This week, we are pleased to have the host from Young Black Equestrians podcast, as well as regular guests Karen Isberg and Wendy Murdoch. We'll also get a wonderful trainer tip from Judge Lee Tubman. This is Reese Coppler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Today, we have our big boss, Glenn, who we don't get to talk to enough or as much as we <laughs> used to or all of those things. He needs to come on today to, to give us an update and tell us what's going on. Yeah, I just wanted to stop by one thing I wanted to mention is that we have swag now for Horse Radio Network. So if uh, you can you can find it, uh, I'll put links uh, on this in this show notes for today where you can find the swag. But yeah, we can we have masks and we have T-shirts and we have all kinds of stuff now available screen printed, as well as the embroidered stuff that we always had through the Distance Depot. So uh, I will put links to all of that, but people are ordering the Horse Radio Network mask with our little logo on it. You guys have masks coming that actually say uh, official HRN host with the logo. Uh-oh. So those are I got mine. Like I'm going to take it? a picture. I got it this morning and I am going to I'm going to take one. I'll take one just a minute with my mic and my mask. It's well, so cute. Stole, it's it's cute. Is it good? I haven't seen them yet. So that's good. They're yeah. super cute and they're really lightweight. You know, they're really nice fabric and they're soft. I'm like super yeah, I don't think about mine. you'd be a sweaty in these. No, uh-uh. no. They're, they're awesome. Well, cool. Thank like, you, Glenn. Do the, Canadian, do the Canadians get the fur-lined version? <laughs> <laughs> Phil needs the warm one. Like, he needs yeah. to sweat in his. Maybe maybe with, that, with, ear, with earmuffs <laughs> attached as well. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. well, we sold dozens of them. So, uh, yeah, adorable. you want to get yours. If you're a big fan, we'd love to have you out there advertising for us. That would appreciate that. The other thing is, you know, Eco Gold, the saddle pad company, that makes a really nice saddle pad. So they have a whole so line of nice. massage pads. They're really yeah, nice so pads. Cool. So nice. Top of the line. Sure. Well, they're I I won awesome. one once. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're also a sponsor of ours, and they also do a show on the network called Heels Down Happy Hour, which is a very popular show on the network and a lot of fun. Well, they're doing a symposium I wanted to tell you guys about because it's a dressage symposium, so I thought it'd be appropriate here. Uh, It is on September 26th from 9 a.m. to 12 till noon Eastern time. It's a virtual event on Zoom, and they're having three Olympic international trainers on, and they're doing a whole bunch of different topics. It's for every level. doesn't matter what level you are, but it's also going to be uh, participation. So you can ask questions. They're going to watch videos and demonstrate through the use of videos. So they have Jacqueline Brooks coming on. Uh, who's doing a thing on understanding biomechanics and the principles of effective riding. And of course, she's an Olympic rider, right? Uh, Oh, yeah. 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 So she'll be there. You uh, also have Shannon, is it Dueck? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And she is doing what in front of the leg really means and how to achieve it. Uh, So she's doing that. And then I'm going to get this wrong. Elise Jordan Gunderson. Mm-hmm. on unlocking the secrets of uh, rideability through the levels. So all three of them are going to be doing it uh, on, again, it's on September 26th from 9 to noon. It's sponsored by Eco Gold. And what's really cool is there is a charge for this. It's $195, but the first 50 registrants get a free Eco Gold saddle pad. So that basically means you're buying a pad and getting the, se- the seminar for free. Um, so you get both for the price of one because their pads run around that Um, you'll be able to attend online and you'll be also able to watch it on demand later if you miss part of it and you'll be able to ask questions Uh, I'll also put links to that in the show notes today uh, and also over on the Facebook page for the Dressage Radio Show so that's coming up September 26th from 9 to noon and you have some really good people doing the seminar there so um, and you get it, you basically get a free pad by going to the seminar. That is so cool. Oh, what a Sounds fantastic awesome. event. Yeah. yeah. Awesome event. Yeah. Great. So, th- and there, so I'll, uh, I'll remind everybody next week. It's on September the 26th and that's all I have. Have a good show guys. 
Oh, thanks, right. Glenn. Thanks for stopping well, we in. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, horses in the morning were over there too doing. And that didn't show. you guys just celebrate a huge anniversary? Yeah, we did. Just celebrated uh-huh. twenty five hundred episodes. Um, That's which, so cool. Which puts us, we think, in the top five longest running daily podcasts in the world. That's, ins- uh, that's we don't think there's too many others. <laughs> so. That is so cool, Glenn. Congratulations. Well, that's huge. Well, you know, when Jamie and I talked about it. We just figured we're too stupid to stop. So, uh, <laughs> so we're too lazy. It's to your stop. three months. It's yeah, that's your right. Three it's our three months. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye, Glenn. Take care. Well, Phil, we had our regional sort of local championships this weekend. So I went out okay. with Big Mike again. Okay. Well, how's yeah, he doing? He, What's going on? What's going on? He was he was actually really good. I I got an eight five and a rain back. I was pretty oh, happy. You know when you awesome actually. I know. I did a halt, and I just like just squeeze my fingers and just move my legs a little bit. And he just like it was. I have never ridden such a good rain back in the in in the test. That was the four three, and he was really okay. good. Um, uh, we trained hard the pirouettes a little bit, so I had to had to keep the pirouettes a little big, which was okay in the four three. Um, but then uh, I rode the pre Saint George, and because everyone will know, you, I was joking with you last week on how you teased me that I didn't get a seventy percent, and so I <laughs> teased you that you didn't get a seventy percent. So everybody, I was there. I was like, okay, this is going really well. I got to get a seventy percent for Phil, and so I went in for one pirouette. It got a little bit big, and I thought. No. Oh, there it goes. Seventy like percent. But actually, it was really fun. It was the most beautiful weather. I, I can't. I know everybody who's listening can can completely understand this. We um, we hauled into the horse park. It's about ten minutes. It's it, Phil, you know, to the horse park. So, um, I didn't stable. It was just very uh, and and it was very strict. Actually, you had to give the name of two support people, and they had to wear. Um, everyone had to be banded and masked. Um. So it was, it was very safe. Um, I, I can't tell you how the stabling was, but, uh, yeah. So big Mike had to show off the trailer, had to kind of hack to the ring a little bit. And he was great. Uh, he's really, he's really a dude and he's really grown up. And, um, so I was really proud of him and, and it was just, yeah, it was the most beautiful weather. It wasn't warm. It was hot. It was great. So, um, oh, it sounds yeah. like a wonderful experience. It was a, it was actually fun at a horse show. I know stop yourself. So, um, <laughs> but I decided kind of after that, he was so good. He's had a really good year. Um, and so I decided that we would hold tight. We, I'm probably not going to move forward to go and travel for the regional finals and the national finals this year. Uh, just obviously because of COVID, I feel a little uncomfortable with that. So, um, we kind of ended the year and it was great. It was a nice feeling. I felt really, really solid with the end of the year. So, um, that was good. So right, that was okay. my give story. A, give him a little break and a big pat yeah. and some sugar. And then you just think about. Onward to I1. How, how to move forward, forward and what you're going to yeah. do. Yeah. What are you going to do over the winter? So. Yeah. I like that's it. it's gonna. So it was good. That was that my, it was my horse show update. So it was fun. All right. Well, I think we got a pretty good show co- coming up, right? We do. We have a great show. <laughs> <laughs> of course we do. So we're going to, we're going to have a commercial break with pro stride and we'll come back with the fellow podcasters of the young black equestrians podcast. Pro stride is the all natural solution for lameness. It uses the power of your horse's own blood to relieve pain, reduce inflammation and improve mobility to keep them sound. Pro stride can be completed stall side by your veterinarian in just 20 minutes with no need for trailering. Pro stride is backed by years of science and success stories. Olympians to pleasure riders, trainers, horse owners and their veterinarians trust the improved performance and lasting results reported with a single injection. No series, no daily supplements and no monthly regimen. When every stride counts, demand the difference they deserve. Ask your vet about ProStride. Learn more at ProStride.com. Well, tonight we have a really big treat. We have two fellow podcasters, and they are the podcasters of the Young Black Equestrians podcast. Abriana and Caitlin, welcome to the show. Hi, we're glad to be here. Hey. We are so happy to have you both, and I think it would be great. Let's have you guys tell us about yourself and your podcast. So, Abriana, I'll have you start with, tell us about yourself. Okay. My name is Abriana, and I am an from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I currently live in Zebulon. I have two Tennessee walking horses and a miniature horse as my horsey kiddos, but I also have two dogs and two cats along with them. 
Um, I went to school for animal science and just finished a master's in One Health. And I launched my business on Monday of this week. Um, So yeah, that's a little bit about me. I've been trail riding uh, a good portion of my life. And um, we started the podcast last year. So that's kind of been keeping, keeping us busy. I love it. So what's your business that you started on Monday? So it is, it's, well, it was technically like a rebrand or a relaunch, but it's Black Unicorn Creative LLC. And I help businesses in the horse industry establish their digital hoof print by ways of logo design, website design, and branding kind of consulting. So that's what I do. Well, I like anything with unicorn in it. So I was. I love it. You got I'm a right fan away. already. Unicorn. You hooked me right away. Anything with unicorn, I am hooked. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. Like we were talking about any, any rider or equestrian, I'm like, my little ears perked up. Like I could really use your help for my own business. So yeah, uh, I can't, I, that is awesome. And Caitlin, tell us about yourself. Um, my name is Caitlin Gooch. I'm from Wendell, North Carolina. And I grew up with horses, and I'm very grateful for that. I have seven horses, three dogs, a rabbit. I have three daughters. I'm married. My husband's in the Navy. And I'm the founder of Saddle Up and Read Nonprofit Literacy Program. And I encourage kids to read by using my horses and teaching them about horse safety and horsemanship. Awesome. Awesome. So maybe, Abriana, you could tell us a little bit about your about your podcast. You know, what was the inspiration behind it? What are you doing with it? And how's it going? Yeah, yeah. So our podcast is called Young Black Equestrians, the podcast. And um, we started off uh, just wanting to discuss kind of the, I won't say only frustrations, but we just wanted to be able to be informative um, with some of the things that we saw in the horse industry and like, you know, faux pas, like, nah, we this should not be done. We're going to talk, create a podcast on how it should be done. Um, but it kind of transformed into something different because all of our experiences are different, even as people of color in the horse industry. So we decided to start talking to other people about their experiences. And that is what has taken us, you know, beyond the moon. We now talk to, you know, people from all walks of life who just have the commonality that they're, they're black equestrians and, you know, navigating this industry, uh, where they may or may not see people that look like them. So we get a, a gambit of different experiences. We've had mounted archers, we've had dressage riders, cutting horse ride or cutting horse cutters. What are they called? I think cutters. I yeah, I, cutting. I, weird. I don't know. But you know, people that ride cutting horses. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's um, correct. I you suppose. Know, and, and we don't all, we don't only talk to young black equestrians. That's kind of just what we are. But I mean, we've talked to a 15 year old barrel racer to like a 60 year old mounted archer. So um, our podcast definitely showcases the diversity within a demographic in the horse industry and highlights how important these people are and how these experiences are all different, but still valued at the same time. And Caitlin, maybe you can tell us a couple of, you know, give us a preview of a couple of your favorite interviews or your favorite people that that you have interviewed. Oh, one of my favorite has to be uh, Marlon Sims. He's the mounted archer that Abriana keeps talking about. But he is an older gentleman. And I mean, he's so fit, like. He is the epitome of fitness. And it's just amazing to see that even in his age, he just decided that he was going to do mounted archery. And he he rides on an international team as well as he does martial arts. And I follow him on Facebook and just looking at his post and how he just gets up every day and he works with his horses and he works to meditate and just work out his body. It inspires me. But I was really happy to talk with him when we did because I inspired to become a mounted archer. I have a bow and I have my arrows now and I've been practicing with my horses. So that has to be one of my favorites. And of course, I just love 
talking <laughs> to all the people that we've talked to, especially with Aubriana, because there are just so many moments and we just are so silly and we're our natural selves and we're just meeting new people and talking to them about who they are and how they got into horses. And so I don't have like many favorites, but I just love and cherish those special moments. Yeah, we know it was a good episode if our cheeks hurt at the end. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that like, is awesome. Jesus yes. Christ, my face. <laughs> like, my face is on fire after this episode because we've been laughing and smiling so hard. And I think, so. so we have our podcast, but in season three, we incorporated a visual component with our YouTube channel. So that people can see the faces of these people. You know, podcasts are great. Um, But just so people can, if they want, see the faces of the people that we're talking to. Because, you know, we're just we're just regular old people just living the life and loving our horses. So when you watch the YouTube channel, I mean, you just see like half the time we're like bent over or out of the (laughs) screen, you know, just laughing. And it's just it's such a good time. That's fantastic. You know, I I have to be honest, I was listening to the show today in preparation for our interview and I was doing the same. I was, I was riding out and it was, you know, it was a nice day and I was down. I was laughing too. You guys are so fun and you just, the energy is awesome. And I'm not going to lie. I'm, I, I really am interested in the mounted archery. (laughs) I, uh, I I actually, we're going to have to talk about this because I have a bow and arrow and I don't even know if Phil knows this, but like I, I, yeah, I had no idea. I, I'm just yeah. listening. I'm listening to you right now. I'm like, what are you talking Phil about? Phil has been oh. no. He thinks I'm, I'm. I'm absolutely serious. I have a bow and arrow, and I've been practicing with my nephew. I have not actually thought about getting on a horse with a bow and arrow because I'm so like I, I. I'm in all of that thought, but yeah, I. I, I used to. Do, I used to shoot and in, in camp, and I really liked it. So for Christmas two years ago, I got a bow and arrow for Christmas. So I, I love it. So I was like listening to this and I was like, I should really do this. So you spurred me on to greater glory for yes. sure. <laughs> you have to give me some pointers. Cause Oh no, I really, <laughs> no, no, we're, we're at the same level here. I, 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 I have a bow and arrow and I've been shooting twice in two years, but I have this dream that this fall when my, my, my 10 year old nephew, is, it's going to give me pointers. So, you know, it's, it's, it's quite an operation here. I think so, this is the blind it. leading the blind a little bit. You, <laughs> yeah, no, my, 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 my brother in the hall really is, really is a, a good at bow shooting. So I, you know, hunting okay. and stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to hunt anything. I just want to shoot targets and yeah, no, it's right. true. <laughs> Phil didn't even know this and he's been my co-host for years. So yeah, <laughs> well, I love it. So I wanted to hear more about the saddle up and read literacy programming. That is so cool. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so with Saddle Up and Read, we've really just been giving out books, introducing kids to horses, making reading fun, um, because reading is not fun when you're just told to just go read, you know? Mm -hmm. So it all started when I saw that the literacy rates in our country were pretty low. And when I say low, among the minority students, it was, the, the gap is just so large. And fun fact, well, not necessarily fun, but in the last 10 years, the literacy, the e-literacy rates have not changed in the United States. And it's pretty pitiful because there have been so many programs that have been funded and nothing has really worked. And so I looked into that to see what it was. And one factor that I found is that kids read books when they are represented. So I kind of took that and took my horses and said, hey, what can I do? And of course, kids get excited when they see horses. And I just felt, you know, let's find some books that have horses and children of color in them. Well, to my surprise, there aren't many. Um, There's about less than 50. I mean, there might be 55, but there is still a low number just considering the amount of horse books that are out there with non-people of color. And so in doing that, um, I've just been showing children that we have been here. Equestrians of color are accepted. We are welcome. This is a space for them as well. And that they really need to read. 
And reading is important because we cannot survive in this society without reading. Yeah, that's so that's fantastic. That's, yeah, that's, so, that's a great, a, a wonderful program. Well, I, I was wondering if uh, I could just add to that because I was listening to your uh, to your podcast and you had, uh, I guess, Gigi Girardo. And she was saying that about, uh, I think it's about reading and but also about about riding where you know, people are not going to read or they're not going to ride and get into horses if they're not represented in, in, in a way, right? By advertisers or, you know, people need to see themselves reading and, and, and riding too. I think there's always a discussion around dressage because it's a small community and we're always like, how, how can we get more people riding? How can we get more people in, in dressage? Mm-hmm. And I think, um, Part of the part of the issue, I mean, if, is the advertising doesn't advertise to all people, mm-hmm. right? You know, so I think if you're if you're running a riding school or a summer camp or something where you, where you have a riding program, I think it would be an idea, especially in COVID times where a lot of businesses are hurting and you're trying to get people out to do things. Mm-hmm. To with your advertising, represent all people. Mm-hmm. And Gigi, Gigi was talking about, you know, um, people, uh, deaf people, mm-hmm. but, you know, also black people and, you know, all people of color, um, you know, sort of it's it's people only advertise to to certain groups. And I think, it, you know, we have to include everybody in in getting the word out about horses are fun and, and horses are, you know, it's a great there's great programs for kids and, and pony club and, and all of that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I also think it's important to relay for for someone who doesn't know anything about horses to relay like the other benefits outside of your horse your child won't be scared of horses and they'll be able to ride. Like talk about the the sense of community that comes with being in a barn atmosphere, the the hard work, the the dedication, you know, character building as you look tens of thousands <laughs> stalls, you know, like th- just, you know, I think people need to, to really focus on like the appeal. Like, why did we get in this? Um, what did we benefit from doing this and how did that help us in our daily lives? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think that is really important when, you know, if you are reaching out to people who normally you don't represent, you say, hey, this is what this environment can do for you. You know, I know you don't see anybody who looks like you in this space, but if this is what you're looking for, if you're looking for your child to develop a good work ethic, to be compassionate around animals, you know, develop nonverbal communication skills, then this is the environment that you should be looking for. Could, couldn't agree more. I think that's why we're all here. You know, we, we all love horses, but love the people that, that they've made us at the end of the day. Um, that's, that's the character. I love it. Character building amok is so true mm-hmm. for all of us, for all of us. And, um, so, so tell me or tell us what, what's next for the podcast. I mean, you guys have started this amazing program. So what's next? <sighs> <laughs> a TV show. A TV show. She's not gonna say yes. It. A TV show is next. Yes. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait. No, we're just putting that out in the atmosphere. I love it. <laughs> put it out there. Love right. it. Put it out there. It's gonna happen one of these days. But um yeah, yeah. I I think a TV show would be would be fantastic. And just, you know, getting more widespread, you know, listenership and, you know, like the whole sponsor sponsorship deal. We, uh, we want to be able to, I say quit our jobs, but I, I quit my job already, but we want to, be able <laughs> to, you know, make this a livelihood, um, because we're passionate about it and we want to travel around. I mean, Corona kind of, you know, shut that, <laughs> but you know, we want to we want to go see these these places. We want to go see these old saddle makers that nobody knows anything about, um, and and hear their stories firsthand and be able to chronicle those visits. Like we want we want to be able to travel and experience the the black equestrians that nobody knows about uh, firsthand. So that'll be put that on a list too. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, ladies, how can our listeners find your show and become listeners of your show as well? Uh, we are on all podcast uh, platforms, uh, Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Um, you can visit our website, youngblackequestrians.com. We are on all of the socials at Young Black Equestrians, except on Twitter. We're uh, at YBE, the podcast, because Young Black Equestrians is too long. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can you can hit us up there. You can hit us up on our, our personal pages. Uh, Caitlin is at the Black Cowgirl on Instagram. And I'm at It's the AJ Way on Instagram. So yeah, you can connect to us there. I love it. Well, thank you, ladies. And we can't wait to continue listening to your shows and hearing about your adventures. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Well, after this commercial break from Kentucky Performance Products, Karen Isberg's going to come back with an Oreo cookie update. Vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant that supports healthy muscle and nerve function by limiting cellular damage. Green grass is the best source of vitamin E for horses, but most horses don't spend enough time grazing to meet their needs. Hay, grain, and winter pasture provide little to no natural vitamin E. To ensure your horse's vitamin E requirements are met, choose Elevate. Elevate contains a readily available source of natural vitamin E. Elevate is cost-effective and easy to feed. To learn more about Elevate, visit the Kentucky Performance Products website at kppusa.com. Well, back by popular demand and because people have been asking and checking in Karen Isberg from Kentucky Performance Products is on and Karen we've missed you and people are asking about an Oreo cookie update so we wanted to <laughs> let everyone know what's going on all right well um how's it how long has it been Reese a couple of months uh, you left in your place in June didn't you he left my place in June. Yep. He went home yeah. in June. Karen Karen has a beautiful farm uh, about 40 minutes from me. Right, Karen? Yep. Yep. Right yep. yep. So he went home. Things were, well, things are still not looking that great in our state, but but things were not looking great COVID wise at, at our farm. And, and um, so he went on a little sabbatical, right? He went back to, he went home. He'd never been home before. Never been home. He went on vacation. So, yeah. um, so, and, and it's, it's, it's an, an interesting, it's a beautiful farm, um, Gorgeous. but I live on a hill. Yes. And when I built my barn, it was for retirees and layups. It was not for riding horses. So there is not a flat 20 meter circle on that 10 acres. Let me tell you, I have looked, it is not there. It does not exist. <laughs> You've searched and searched <laughs> I have and searched, searched. ridden. <laughs> there. It is not there. Yeah. There are some flat places, but there is no flat. So Oreo <laughs> has been, I have three quarters of a circle that's almost <laughs> flat. But then, and I'm, but then when you get to the one edge of it, it's like a bell and downhill. <laughs> okay. So we've been doing a lot of, we've been doing a lot of hill work because, you know, I have a lot of hills. Yeah. So we trot and canter up a lot of hills and Oreo is always like, oh my God, another hill. <laughs> <laughs> Another <laughs> just go. He's got he's gotta get his booty in gear. He's getting that booty right. strong. Yeah. And this was, you know, it was it was it was really hard because we had been in Florida. Um, obviously we had to go home and come come home from COVID and uh then we were in lockdown. So Oreo was here with me at the farm and and we we everything was in lockdown. So he worked with me and we were really working on the second level stuff. And then, but Karen hadn't ridden and, and that was, that was the problem was Karen wasn't able to ride. And, and that, so then it became pretty clear that Karen needed to ride her own horse. Cause we had just been coming. We'd just come from Florida. Hadn't we, Karen? I did. I was missing him. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Was missing him. I really was. And I ride him every day. And, you know, um, I have some places around my house where I can do, you know, some straight line canter transitions and things like that. So people look at, and there I am riding around my front yard. They're like, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just ride all over. It's like, I'm everywhere. Um, and we've done some really nice trail riding. Um, I have a friend with a trailer who comes and gets me and we go out into South Woodford County and we go up and down the hills and through the creeks. And he has been a superstar. I mean, he will just slide right down the hill into the creek 
and splash across the creek and up the other side through the mud. I mean, he just doesn't even think twice. It, it, you, you'd be proud of him. Rich. I would. Well, so you'd Karen, be. tell everybody like this is amazing from where we came from, isn't it? Well, he's a pretty big chicken. <laughs> <laughs> a big chicken. Yeah, big chicken. Yeah, and would spook but at he, everything. Yeah. Right, but you have a background. I mean, you and we've been out on the trail, and you've told us. I mean, you you did a lot of trail riding as a young kid, didn't you? I have done a lot of trail riding, and I've done a lot of trail riding in Kentucky in in what's the wood what's considered Woodford County Hunt Country, which is down all by the creeks and stuff. So it did some pretty hairy riding through there, through creeks and down hills. And so I've done a lot of that. So that doesn't bother me. And I just kind of give him his head and go, go figure it out. And he does. He goes. He's good. Yeah, it, I'm, so I'm so proud of you. And he wouldn't go around the farm. He would spook at everything when we first everything. got him. Everything. Everything. So it's amazing to see how the relationship yeah, because it's almost, you've almost owned him two years, right? Yeah, it'll be two years, wow. I think in October. And, you know, and he leads. When I take him out on these rides, um, we go with another thoroughbred that's kind of more chicken than he is, and Oreo <laughs> leads. He's the yeah, leader. It's amazing. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, go. I love he it. He spooks at the round bales, but today he went up and put his nose on one and realized it was food. See, I think we're not going to spook at the round bales much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, wait, I can eat that. Yeah. I and love today it. we got into a spot in the creek where it was pretty deep. I mean, it, we were probably up to our knees and hocks. And he wow. he stood there. Have you seen the pictures of the horses that will pick up their feet and, and paw in the water? He had everybody sopping wet. He just stood there. <laughs> I mean, I could hardly get him out of the water. It was like he just stood there in heaven. Just. Like a 10 year old kid jumping up and down in a puddle. I could he see. He thought it. that was the greatest. I know oh, it's so funny. Fun. Oh, I love it. So I love it. So, have you been, because you've been doing some other stuff for studying? We were talking about that earlier, weren't you? About some uh, dressage training, too. You haven't let that go as well, right? No, I haven't. I've, I've been keeping up my journal that, you know, that you gave me. So, I do that. And I've been um, taking some of the master classes, some of the equine master classes, which are really phenomenal they're really great. You, you know, there's a whole library of them and you can get on there and you can, you can watch the ones that you want. And I mean, it's, it's so it's, it's different things. You know, I've been doing a lot of, um, horse behavior and natural horsemanship and, and doing some of those things with him, which is good. So just some different things. I think it's been a good break for both of them. It's been a really good confidence builder for me because I have no ring. I can, no. I I'm riding out in the field. That's it. You know, so you just kind of got to get over everything when you're out there. Just got to go. <laughs> exactly. So. You got to go. You got to go. <laughs> One day I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to canter. I'm going to canter. I, I got my, my, you know, I got my, got my courage up and I'm like, we're going to canter up this hill. And we cantered all the way up the hill. Of course, it's uphill. He's getting tired and he's not acting stupid <laughs> uphill. <laughs> and if they buck, it just makes you level. So it's not a problem, but. You know, so we've been cantering <laughs> everywhere now. We canter everywhere. It's hilarious. So I it's love been it. fun. I love it. Yeah. Well, but I we do, are... I do miss Maple Crest and you guys. I do. We, we miss, miss, we miss you. And, 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 you know, life will someday return back to normal. And, and, but it's fun to hear. It's fun to hear the adventures of Oreo and Karen. And, and like you said, at the end of the day, you'll be that much better and stronger and have that much better of a relationship. So I love it. And, and Karen, thanks so much for coming on and telling us about your sabbatical and what's been going on. And, and if our listeners have questions uh, about Kentucky performance products or even Oreos sabbatical, how can they find you online? Um, they can find us, me on Instagram, um, KPP USA or Kentucky performance products. You can find us on Facebook is another good place to go. And I'm doing, um, I'm, I'm doing a weekly, um, column now called taco tuesday and taco is the retired horse that's at our farm who's oreo's best friend so oreo does cameos in taco tuesday so she go to our <laughs> facebook page and and read about taco it's it, it is taco's adventures in taco's own voice it's and cute taco it's is very 24 cute. years old he's a thoroughbred he was a racehorse he was an event horse and he was a dressage horse so he has a lot to say 
So go it. go there and read those. It's fun and Oreo. It, it does some Sounds cool. in there. And then, <laughs> you know, uh, info at kppusa.com. Go to our website. There's just, there's lots of places you can get a hold of me. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Karen. And we will talk to you soon. All right. It was fun talking to you guys. Stay healthy. You too. Well, we're going to have a great discussion with Wendy Murdoch of the Murdoch Method. We hope you enjoy. Well, we are already laughing our heads off and so excited to have Wendy Murdoch of the Murdoch Method back on our show. Wendy, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I know we were, I mean, it's hard to keep a straight face. We've already been laughing so much <laughs> no, before. And we're like, okay, control ourselves. Like we can't, we have to get organized. And I love it. Well, first of all, Wendy, you have been so busy this summer with your webinar series. So tell us all about your webinar series. Oh, I, you know, it's such a blast. I am enjoying it so much. And um, for my 100th webinar, I had Linda Tellington Jones. And I mean, I've known Linda since 1985, which is a very long time. I hate to say how long that is. Um, <laughs> so since 1985. And so um, we talked about Surefoot. She's such a fan of Surefoot. And um, the thing that was so fascinating is that we talked about the first um, time she ever saw Surefoot. And what I didn't know at the time of the webinar, which was September 2nd, was until Facebook popped up. You know how it does the memory back in the, you know, the, the memory yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it popped yeah. up September 2nd, six years ago was the day I showed Linda Surefoot. And I was, I had no idea until after the webinar was over. But we talked about this one horse, which was just the most crazy thing I've seen. I've only seen this happen once. Um, I worked with a couple of riders under saddle and everything went great. And it was the, nor I consider it normal. You know, the horses got more relaxed and they put their necks down and their stride length opened and the riders could feel the difference in the horses. And so I worked with two horses under saddle. And then I said to the barn owner, I said, do you have a difficult horse? And she said, oh yeah, we have Huey. He's ADD. I said, well, why don't you bring out Huey? Let's see what's going on. So she brings this horse out. He's a thoroughbred. He'd been a show jumper. And I worked with him a little bit with each front foot. And then I did, I think I did both front feet. And he fell over and fainted. And what? I, oh, he what? fell over. He fell over. And I mean, I didn't actually see it. I think I was looking at Linda at the time. And this horse fell over and laid on the ground. I thought I had a heart attack. I thought I had killed my first horse with Surefoot. And I looked at Linda and Linda was not rushing over to do ear work. So I was like, okay, he can't be dead. And I look back at the horse and he's laying on the ground and I'm like, okay, he's not dead yet. And I looked at Linda and she said, oh, look at how he's breathing. And I look back at the horse and I'm like, okay, the horse is breathing. Okay. He's yeah. not dead. And he lay there for like five minutes. I don't know how long it was. I was in such a state of vagal freak oh, out. Panic. I mean, it was panic. so freaking out. Panic. Absolute panic. And there were 20 people there. There was another horse in the arena. There was the barn owner. The The horse owner wasn't there. <laughs> the barn mm. owner. Oh, <laughs> and I'm looking at this horse. And finally, he just, you know, gets up and he's fine. Goes back to the barn. So... You know, we talked about this at Linda's webinar, and we're both convinced that the horse fainted. And it was yeah. so interesting because today on my webinar, I had Catherine Wyckoff, and we were talking about the vagal nerve and the and the connection between vagus and your parasympathetic sympathetic, your autonomic nervous system, fight and flight. And on the you have fight and flight on one side, that's your sympathetic, but on your parasympathetic, you have freeze and faint. And that's what this horse did. We we somehow pop Vegas and oh, wow. he fainted. And Linda had seen this happen before, which was really a good thing because she'd seen it happen before. So she wasn't panicking about it. And, and um, she was just observing the horse. And if you've never seen a horse faint, which, uh, you know, is not a common thing, but can happen. It's astounding. I mean, it's really like shocking. Um, but horses can faint just like people. Um, and you know, the, the, one of the things I thought was so fascinating when this happened was Linda said to me, so Wendy, what's the most interesting thing you've seen with Surefoot? And I'm like, besides killing this horse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the horse that just fainted was so right horse up fainted. Oh my God. You know, and I, I mean, I was like, <laughs> talk about stressed. I was like out of my body experience going, I, I don't know what to do here. Right. We just stood there and waited and he got up and he was totally fine. I mean, he was totally fine, but 
you know, I, so I'm always really cautious the first time I work with a horse with surefoot pads. You know, that's a little bit of PTSD left over from that experience, even though it was oh my six God. years ago. Oh, my um, goodness. Because, yeah. because you don't know. And that's, you know, in, in all the webinars I've been doing, and I had Glenn on on Tuesday. That was fabulous. Um, oh, but with him. these. Yeah, with the webinars, what I've been doing is trying to understand how Surefoot's working and try to understand what's happening in the nervous system, what's happening in the body, what's happening in the fascia. And the whole vagal nerve thing, the whole, am I safe? That's the number one question Vegas has, is am I safe? Um, and that's the, you look at horses, that's their number one question. Am I okay? Am I safe? You know, do I need to leave now or didn't it, you know? And if we can answer that question in a positive way, yes, you're safe and you're safe with me. Then the horses are like, oh, cool, I can learn. And, you know, it's so like with the pandemic, you look around and people walk into a strange environment and they're like, am I safe? It, you know, is this person going to, you know, give me, right? We're all sure. like horses yeah. now because we're all kind of like in a heightened state of alertness and we're walking into environments and going, let's see, is this restaurant? And what do you think about them? Or, you know, oh, I've got to go to the bathroom and I have to use it at the 7-Eleven. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. It's true. Been there. <laughs> You're like, um. yeah. So we get to feel more like horses in that we're more uh, uh, attuned to our environment and a little more on the flight side of, is it safe? And this is how they live. But, you know, it's it's so important for us to have this experience from this perspective so that we can really relate to our horses and understand how important it is to make them feel safe so that they can learn. Because you think about all these kids in school and, you know, the parents don't feel safe, the kids don't feel safe, and then somebody's got COVID and then the school class is infected and then they're not safe and they all have to go home. And it's kind of like, you know, we get to kind of, you know, as horse people, understand what our horses go through, understand their perspective and understand what it's like to be heightened awareness about your environment because, you know, you're a, you're a flight animal, you're designed to flee. And now we're getting the feeling of what it's like to be designed to flee. Um, so, you know, it's just fascinating. So, but anyway, that was Linda's webinar. It was just, it was great. And we had Glenn on on Tuesday and I have to say that I really didn't know that much about Horse Radio Network until I talked to Glenn. And I'm so glad we did that interview, that webinar, because it's it it's I'm part of your family. I know We're family. Exactly. Yeah. We are yeah. family. We got family. We are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it, and I didn't realize how much of a family like I know with you guys we're part, we're family and I feel yeah. like I've known you guys forever. But yep. there's this bigger family and the cool things that, you know, like the cruises. I didn't know about the cruises. Yes. <laughs> yes, the cruises. Bill's been on a cruise. Oh yeah, there's a cruise and and uh we had a good time. Re Reese sent us off. She came down and we we had I mean, it's just yeah. really great because like Glenn, Glenn's our boss, but he's like our family. And then our, our, our listeners, our auditors are like our, you know, we just. So like, what do you do on the cruise? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, the same thing you do on, on, well, actually we had a, a good, a trivia night that was sort of horse themed. Um, but otherwise it's just the same. As I've never a been on a cruise. You, you so. drink. <laughs> yeah. You, well, there's a lot yeah. of drinking. Oh, yeah, a lot of drinking. We, you guys boat. got yeah. off. You got off the boat. It, I wasn't able to go, Wendy, because they went during season, you know, when I was in oh, Wellington. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit hard for me to sort of <laughs> say bye to all my clients at that time. But yeah. I did. They <laughs> left out of Miami that year. At, to Miami, right, Phil? We, yep. I came down to Miami and, and they had a pizza party send off. It was fun. Oh, awesome. No, you know, it's so it was just really fun to talk to Glenn and really find out just how how Horse Radio Network got started. and all the different programs that you guys have. And, you know, I was, and it was just great. I really, really enjoyed it. And, um, and so I think everybody else did too, because that's one of the things about my webinars that I like so much is I kind of get to know people a little better and kind of, I'm always curious how they wound up where, doing what they're doing. Oh, and he was the king. That was the best part. Yes. <laughs> when you were part of the, the me medieval troop. The medieval, yeah, that was really funny. So we yeah. laughed a lot. Mm. Oh, he, speaking, of laughter. <laughs> speaking of laughter, speaking okay. of laughter, okay, so Wendy talking about what laughter. So when you came to Florida, I'm not sure we've talked about this on, on the show, but you introduced me to a program called the Franklin balls. And I had no idea what these were. 
And I will tell you, I was, I actually was teaching with, with the balls this afternoon and I wanted you to tell people about them because they're on your website and they're awesome. So can you kind of tell people what they are? Okay. We just have to start with, you're going to laugh. Okay. (laughs) That's the first thing. We cannot talk about balls under your butt without laughing. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But this is why we got in trouble. I know we're going to get in trouble. So we're just already. Um, so the Franklin balls, there's actually seven different different ones. And several. Um, two of them are, are a single uh, piece and the other are paired balls, right? And so you have, I call them peanuts. And one peanut is water-filled and the other is air-filled. And they're shaped like a peanut. And then you have the different balls. I, I have to give them names so that I can keep them straight in my head. So there's two that are textured and I call them green moons and blue moons because they're green and blue. And the green ones are bigger than the blue ones. And then you have um, orange oranges. They're the biggest ones. And then I have tomatoes. And then there's these purple plush ones that kind of are like, I think of them like like a soft tennis ball. And so the really, really cool thing is it's like it's like a lesson all in itself in that you take the Franklin balls and you, if you're working with a pair, let's say green moons, just for an example, and you put them underneath your seat bones. And you know, I always find it so interesting because people ask me, do I have it in the right place? And I'm like, I'm not putting my hand there. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't going in there. I ain't going there. Sorry. But you should, you know, I think you'll figure it out. I think, you know, you'll feel your seat bone on the ball. And if if you're not sure, you can always just put your hand underneath your seat bone and feel that sitting on a hard surface so you know where you're going. But I mean, it's so funny because that's like the first question everybody asks is, is, is they look at me really funny and then they put them underneath and they give me a grimace and then they go, where are they supposed to go? <laughs> no. and, and is this right? And I'm like, I'm, like I said, I'm not going there, but you, know, <laughs> you just. Well, I mean, this is a bit of a, a a funny thing because I think one of the first lessons I had to learn when I started riding is how not to sit on my balls. So yeah, oh, you would know. <laughs> we don't know these things. <laughs> That's true. Um, we don't know these things. <laughs> I, I I could go down a rabbit hole, but I'll avoid that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah we won't go too far. <laughs> Good, down idea. Here, but. Good idea. Good yeah. idea. Um, but you know, guys can have. You'll have four. You'll have two artificial and two, you know, <laughs> yeah. natural. Yeah, real. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. um, but, you know, I'm mostly dealing with women riders. Um, and and the thing is, I think the most, the the thing that makes the Franklin balls work the best is the fact that, one, it, it lifts you out of the saddle. And there's the different sizes because some people are more comfortable on something a little larger, like the orange, or a little smaller, like the tomato. Um and some like, uh, you know, a ball that's a little squishier or a ball that's a little firmer. And so, but what they do is they lift you out of the saddle. And I think that that's really the key because you can't hold on to your habit. So, you know, it's so interesting. One of the things that I've always noticed over the years is how we have such an emotional attachment to our saddle. And I still have, I think I still have it, my very first saddle that I bought when I was 16, but I couldn't put it on a horse anymore. So I took it apart to use it as a teaching saddle because it was the open cell foam, close contact, you know, it wasn't a pre but it was a blue ribbon, flat, no, no knee rolls, nothing. Um, and I couldn't ever put it on a horse again when I realized that it, ha- it didn't have enough protection for the horse's back. But I still am emotionally attached to that as my first saddle. So I think that first of all, we're removed from our tack. And the second thing is we're on an unstable surface. So in the same way that the surefoot pads work for the horse because it's an unstable surface, the Franklin balls work for the rider because it's an unstable surface. And suddenly you can't just get into your habit and how you sit in your saddle. So a lot of people sit a little heavier on one seat bone. And when you have the Franklin balls under your seat bones, You'll feel that because the balls will, you could squish them out the back or they might pop out the front. I had a woman cantering with the blue peanut underneath her seat and she went to the far corner, beautiful dressage horse, right? And she got to the far corner and she spit that peanut right out and it landed on the oh, wall. I was amazed. Oh, <laughs> oh. Right? But she shifted her weight in such a way, it spat it out. I mean, wow. And that's, yeah. And what we don't realize is whether or not our weight's in the middle, whether or not we're equal on our two seat bones. And we all have habits. Just look at people, how they drive their car. 
you know, nobody sits square because we are, we're always got our foot on the accelerator. So we're always sitting slightly uneven. And we carry those habits, whether we're sitting in a saddle or in a chair or a desk. But the Franklin balls lift you up enough that you're feeling slightly unstable. And so your nervous system gets really heightened and you're like, whoa, may, I could lose these, right? Where am I? And you really find your balance. And that's really what it's all about is that you find a better balance and a better position because you're suddenly removed from your familiar and you're recognizing that you're slightly unstable. And it shouldn't be painful, okay? I just need to say that, that sometimes people will put the balls under their butt and they'll go, oh, that really hurts. And and that means that, you know, take them out. Um, you know, it's not about putting them in and sitting there for the rest of your lesson. It's like, put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out till your nervous system goes, oh, okay, this is a little, I don't feel quite so unsteady. And this is a little more familiar and maybe it's comfortable. It's going to feel weird the first time, right? Right. Yeah. Please? yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And all of it, if you switch, you go from the peanut to the moons, you know, it, it feels different. Right. And sometimes I, we have found that you have to kind of play around with, so everybody's different with a different different one and and some are more comfortable than others. So we right. have, we have learned, you know, to, to just shift them around. But what I have people do is walk by the mirror and oh, they yeah. see their alignment and they're, I, I, I have them stand there before we, we put the balls under their seat or, um, the, the fuzzy, the, the purple balls is it's a joke. Cause I say, I put them under everyone's elbows and if they lose yeah. them, it's 25 cents. Girl, I was up oh, with Starbucks coffee last week. I was really, I, <laughs> I, need, I need, yeah, I need to start putting a jar out there. Like my Starbucks fund for the week. Cause I was killing it last week. I, awesome. I made a dollar 50 this afternoon. Um, but it's kind of a joke. And, um, yeah, it was my neighbor, and I was like, "All right, well, next time you go into town, you're gonna have to pick me up a Starbucks for for awesome. your toll, you know." But no, it, it's really a, it's just a fascinating program to see people ride on them, and and it's been as an instructor. It, if there's any instructors listening, it's been a great tool for me. They're, awesome. They're great because They're I think awesome. it really you can tell someone to put their elbows in and keep their hands steady and bring back you know their elbows and put weight weight in their contact and all the things and you know, at the end of the day, uh, you can either do it or you don't because the ball right. will either stay or it won't. And and you right. kind of got to figure it out. So it, it's really cool. And there's, there's a whole program, right. And, and, and on your YouTube channel too, right. You can learn more yeah. information on the Murdoch them. method, YouTube channel. I have a video on how to use the Franklin balls. And you know, the thing that was so fascinating for me was when I, when I first got a hold of them, um, I had a, I had a client, she was a professional and she had had a horse um, sit on her and break her pelvis. Okay. It's a long story, but she was coming back to riding and she had such a difficult time getting into the saddle. Like she obviously used a mounting block, but she was like a clothespin and it would take her time before everything would kind of let go and let her sit down. And so she was, uh, the first thing I used in that set, cause there's a set of seven was the water filled purple peanut, which it's, it's not something I use a lot, but when you need it, it's like so amazing. And so I gave that to her and she just put it on one side between her thigh and her seat bone. And it just gave her the support to let go. And she would, she warmed up every day with that for about five minutes and then she would take it out and she could sit in the saddle and then she was better for the rest of the rides. Right. But it really made such a difference to helping her get back into the saddle that, you know, it's like I said, it's not the one you use a whole lot. It's the one I use the least, but when you need it, that one is just like, it's incredible. Um, and then the blue filled peanut one, you know, if you don't want to mess around with having two separate balls, the blue air filled peanut one is great. Cause you can just put it sideways and have it under your seat. But again, mm -hmm. I use that one. If somebody's like really off to one side, I'll put it on the, between the seat bone and the thigh on the opposite side and draw them back the same way you would with, um, shimming a saddle, right. Yeah. With using shims to bring a saddle yeah. back. And, um, so they're just really, they're fascinating. And I really do think of it as like the sure foot for the human in the saddle because it, because of this unstable surface and the mm -hmm. heightened awareness and having to figure it out. But you know, the most important thing about Franklin balls, what's that? They're fun. They are fun. Yeah. You laugh. You laugh. <laughs> I love it. And and sometimes you laugh, but you also can really feel the difference and really yeah. feel like today. I, my client really felt how unstable her connection was because mm. she really had struggled with keeping and, and her hope she was having trouble with connection. And so 
you know, I knew kind of what was going on before it started. So I knew kind of what my, my tactic tactic was going to be. And it really helped her. And it le- she left here thinking, wow, okay, I can really fix this, that by next week. So Aww, it was awesome. I know. Awesome. That's well, so great. Wendy, we love having you on the show. You have so many fun stories and so many resources <laughs> on your website. Can you tell us how we can find you, where all the information is and all the good stuff? Sure. So the website is murdochmethod.com. And on YouTube, I have, I have, so I have two websites and two channels, okay? murdochmethod.com and Murdoch Method on YouTube, and then surefootequine.com and Surefoot Equine on YouTube. And on YouTube, on the Surefoot Equine channel, that's where all the webinars are. I have 106 now. Wow. Um, so that's where the webinar content. And then of course on Facebook, same thing, Murdoch method and Surefoot. Um, and so the Franklin balls are on the store, murdochmethod.com slash shop and the videos on Murdoch method. And so, you know, it's, it's an easy lesson. It's, it's so, it doesn't require a lot of training or anything to use them. Just, it's just fun and you just play with them and it really makes a difference. I always think of it as kind of like the person gets to take a lesson home with them and keep improving, Mm -hmm. you know, in between seeing an instructor. And so it's just, I find it super helpful. It is. It is. Well, Wendy, thank you so much. And we can't wait till next month. I know this is such a blast. It's always, I always look forward to talking to you guys. We do too. (laughs) We do too. Thanks, Wendy. Well, Phil, it is still so hot here today. The horses were sweating like crazy. And I had a a great discussion with one of my students who has the stretch tech shoulder relief girth. And she was using um, the neoprene liner. But we actually talked about going and grabbing one or or, or ordering one of the liners that's uh, fleece. Because those are great if your horse has any kind of scurf or this horse has actually gotten a little bit of fungus under his girth, his elbow area. It didn't really look like it had much to do with the girth, but I said, hey, grab a few of those fleece liners. Uh, And that's what I love about those girths. Along with making your horses feel great, the liners you can wash, love it. Yeah. I mean, it's just great to have the option of of interchangeable for your different situations. I mean, you can have your day-to-day liner, whether it be neoprene or, or, uh, fleece. And then you can just, you know, quickly zip it off and, and put on, if you want to, you know, compete with the, with the leather liner or, um, you know, what, whatever, whatever your situation is, you don't have to change your whole complete girth to, uh, you know, to accommodate the, the different situations. I mean, the, the interchangeable liners are awesome. And, you know, if you've, if you've got, a, if your leather one gets a little bit tired and you don't have to buy a whole new girth, you just, you just buy a new liner. It's, it's yeah. just a wonderful, innovative, fantastic idea from, from Total Saddle Fit. Love it. And as always, Justin at Total Saddle Fit is phenomenal. They have phenomenal products. Uh, we believe in them. We use them every day and we test them hard, Phil and I, honestly, here in our own stables. So uh, if you have any questions, check them out at totalsaddlefit.com. And uh, we are coming back with a fantastic Total Saddle Fit tip of the week with Judge Lee Tubman. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. Well, for this week's Total Saddle Fit tip of the week, we have FEI four-star judge Lee Tubman on the show. Lee, thanks for coming back and doing a segment with us. Hi there. Thanks for having me back. Always happy to be here. So we wanted to do our Total Saddle Fit tip of the week. Um, what, What do you have for us? Well, actually, something interesting, uh, and this isn't something that that many people would think to say, but when you go around the arena, this is the first time that I'm going to have a look at you. And normally, when the previous rider is done, the judge is writing comments and and various things in the test paper, the new rider comes in to ride around the ring. Uh, At some point, I'm going to glance up and I'm going to look at you. And when I look at you, that's my first impression. So when you ride around the arena, I think it's important that you would attempt to continue to school the horse a little bit to make sure it's on your aids, maybe make some transitions, maybe do some lateral work, some shoulder in, traver, or if there's enough room, a bit of leg yielding or half passing. But, but show me that you are checking and making sure things are working. 
um, don't walk around the arena. Try not to walk around the arena. Don't walk around the arena on a long rain. You're about to take part in a performance. And for lack of a better expression, you're an entertainer and I'm going to be your audience. So it's important that you uh, make a good first impression. So when I would look up, I'd like to see, okay, this horse is uh, well prepared for the show. It looks great. You look great. The horse is uh, braided nicely. But then I would like to look and see really good quality posture. The horse is in a correct frame you'd ride by and say good morning or good afternoon and make sure you're really clear about that. Cause I have a lot of people that say good afternoon in the morning and good morning in the <laughs> afternoon. <It> then <laughs> makes me think, uh Oh, right. Uh, this could be a problem. Now in some <laughs> circumstances, maybe the horse before you, there were issues and problems that have to be sorted out and that takes a bit of time. So if you go around the arena once, and the judge isn't ready for you, and you go around twice, and they're not ready for you, maybe consider changing direction, or if you're cantering, maybe consider trotting, and then this would be the only time that I would tell you to walk. Because if there's something that's happened in the test before you that's difficult and it has to be sorted out, don't wear out your horse going around the arena before I would be ready to ring the bell. So I think, you know, once around in each direction, and then maybe, you know, take a pause, save the horse's energy. Mm-hmm. Then the bell rings or the whistle blows. Okay, get organized and then come on in the ring. So that would be my tip of the day. That's, a, that's an awesome tip. Awesome. I, yeah, I uh, really try to prepare my students, uh, you know, for doing their test with also a plan for going around the ring. And, you know, for all yeah. the contingencies, like you said, like sometimes that you go around, you know, you pass the judge once, good morning, and then they're ready for you. They're going to ring that bell right away. Don't get flustered. That happens, right? Mm-hmm. You know, go and do your test, but also Correct. you have to be prepared for the judge not being ready. And like you said, there's a number of problems. Um, they haven't, the, the scores have not um, sent the test there. Or, why not? You know, or, yeah. 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 Don't get nervous. Don't do laps around. You need to have a plan for that situation. And, you know, so I just try to, you know, let, you know, like you said, you might want to school a little something if your horse is a little nervous, um, maybe go, you know, once one way, once the other way, right by the judge. Like, I think every horse is unique, but you, you must have a plan for this, you know, for this thing, because it is so important that you get into your test in the right way. And, you know, even if the judge has only seen a quick glance of you, that's fine. If you're not if you're not ready to come into the test from having a plan from going around the outside of the arena, you're you're setting yourself up for problems, I think. Agreed. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. No, I think that's fantastic. Because that is actually it's a point of time. If you don't think about it or you don't have a plan, you will panic a little. Because, <laughs> or say yeah. good morning when it's afternoon, yeah. or you know, it's just like it, it's part of the performance, like you said. You don't want to canter around six times. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, there's your canter tour basically in the, in the test already happening outside the ring. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And just, you know, talk to your trainer or, or talk to your team about how you're going to do that and, and be ready. And then if you're nervous, remember if it's morning or afternoon, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to say that, but it happens no, so true. often. Yeah, absolutely. I think people are flustered anyways. And like you said, it, it doesn't instill confidence in, in you as the, uh, as the audience is, is a way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is going to go well this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> right. Like, oh, great. So, so how do you think, I'm just going to ask this. Cause I think, how do you, do you like writers to smile? Do you hate the fake smile? Like, what would you say as the writers are going around the ring? I'd actually like someone to come and just greet me. Say okay. hello. Say something. Say hello. Don't ride by and, you know, don't say anything. I mean, it's not that detached of a situation yet. You know, I'm not completely in a hermetically sealed cubicle at the moment. <laughs> but, you know, so be engaging a little bit. Um, say something, you know, just greeting and, and your number or something like that. And then, you know, go and be prepared to come in the arena. So I would prefer that. With regards to smiling, you know, uh, fake smile. No, this is not, your horse is not piaffing and it's standing still and you're smiling and really happy. No, you're not. I know you're not because (laughs) I've been in that position and I wasn't smiling. 
So, <laughs> you know, it's just norm, just be normal human emotion. I mean, I hope you're having a good time, but you know, enjoy your, your ride and whatever facial expression you have, you don't have to create one. It's not that kind of an environment or atmosphere. So, you know, it is what it is, but don't make a fake smile that I would agree with you there and say that that's not <laughs> something that would be really appropriate. Fantastic. Well, Lee, thank you again. These have been such great tips. We can't thank you enough. And um, how can our listeners find you online for more information? Uh, my website's www.leetubman.com. Fantastic. Well, everyone, remember what day, what time of the day it is when you see Lee and greet him yeah, and say no hi. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, great advice. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Well, Phil, I have actually met some of our awesome listeners this week. Uh, we've had some horses for sale and and I've had people come try some horses and they're like, oh my gosh, we're listeners to the show. So shout out to Chapin, Kathy, and Sue uh, who have come to see, come, come to my farm this week uh, for some trials on horses. And uh, that was super fun to chat about the show with them. So uh, as always, we love emails and Facebook shout outs. Uh, we are also want to send our thoughts and prayers to everyone out West that's dealing with the wildfires. Um, that's not something I have any experience with here in Kentucky. And I just, oh, I watched the news this morning and just my heart bleeds for everyone. So uh, we hope you are staying safe and well. If there's anything we can do here on the Horse Radio Network, uh, please know, uh, contact us. My email is reese at horseradionetwork.com and phil is philip at horseradionetwork.com. And we would happy happily help in any way that we can. Uh, we are definitely sending prayers. So as always, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. You can find me probably the best way on Facebook or my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors for allowing us to put on a show, KPP. Total Saddle Fit, Surefoot Equine Stability Program, and Pro Stride. Don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down, your shoulders back, and stay safe and well. And we can't wait to talk to you next week.